Hey everybody, today we're going to do the complete testing and troubleshooting of the fuel system on a V-Star 1100 motorcycle. Before you spend tons of money on a mechanic, you'll find that you could troubleshoot and test most of these parts right here in your garage with a few tools. You'll be able to save a lot of money in the process. Troubleshooting for this system starts at the fuel tank itself. It's going to make its way all the way to the carburetors where the fuel delivery is. This includes electrical and plumbing and everything in between. When you're dealing with fuel systems, you may in fact find that you have more than one problem. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. I already have a movie that I put together that goes into great detail with the removing of the gas tank to reach the areas that we're going to need to do this job. So if you want to take a look at that movie first, click the link up in the top right corner. We'll take you to it. I'm not going to be removing the carbs as we do in that movie, but after that we could continue. First order of business with electrical troubleshooting like this is going to be the testing of the battery. If you've got a weak battery, there's just no sense. We need to ensure proper voltages as step one. Testing the battery now, I'm testing through the charging cable. Assuming the fuse through the charging cable is good, you can see I have an inline fuse, red one off to the left. And I'm assuming also that you have a simple cheap multimeter, which you could get at Harbor Freight for a few dollars. Don't get one that's too cheap. Spend at least 30 bucks on a multimeter. But I'm going to test. You can see the black one is obviously the unshielded, the red positive being shielded. Take a look at the connection here. I'm seeing 13.3 volts. This is more than enough. I've let the charged overnight top off the battery. And of course, if you don't have a charger cable, you come right off the terminals. Red positive, black negative. And this will get you the same effect. Generally though, if the battery's got enough juice to start the bike, it's got enough juice to run the fuel pump. Here's a test that can be done before the fuel tank is even removed with the fuel line disconnected. And that's put a bottle under the fuel valve, first turning it to the on position to see if there's good flow, turn it off that there's no flow, and then turn it to reserve to see if there's good flow and back to off. If there's not good flow, you may have a blockage in this assembly. I have a separate video that talks about repairing this. Click up top on the right is a video that will take you to this repair. Down here on the low side is a cover. Screws are M5. We need to remove them to gain access to the pump. We can see the pump and some connectors under here. Now listen as I turn on the key and hit the cutoff button for the engine. If you just heard the fuel pump prime, you know a myriad of electrical components are working and things are looking good. Do a close up at the pump. If you can hear the pump prime in, we might as well check to see if you even have a fuel delivery problem at all. So we're going to remove this cover so we can remove the fuel hose from the car. This will be M2.5 to remove this cover. Disconnect the hose from the carburetor. We can see the hose with the clamp on it is the one that was detached from the carburetor. This is hanging here. The other hose that came off the tank has a small funnel connected to it and the cable ties hold it in an upward position. I'll add a small volume of gasoline to this funnel, just enough to prime and test the pump. As the systems turn on, you'll see how quickly the funnel drains as the pump primes. Shortly thereafter, you can see the gas pour out of the hose and into the gas can. There's nothing wrong with this system, obviously. I just wanted to demonstrate what this test looks like. But what should you check for if you could hear that pump prime, but you don't see any gas come out or get pulled in? We're going to remove this cover directly under the seat, removing these two snaps in the rear of the cover. First one's here, second one's over here. We'll lift this cover up and out of the way to the high side. Over here we can see the fuel filter. This is the only fuel filter you should have in line on the bike. The other one's in the gas tank and one small one's in the carburetor, but that's it. No inline fuel filter should be installed, except for this one right here. It's a common mistake that's seen on these bikes. Fuel filters everywhere, and I don't know why. This fuel filter we could see is rubber mounted. And I lifted it right off of that mount with no problem at all. These clips right here can be easily removed. Flathead screwdriver is then gently used to pry the hose off of the end of the fitting of the filter on both sides. Aside from a visual inspection conducted on both sides for this filter for practical purposes, as this one is fairly new, 
I'm just going to blow through it to show that there's no obstruction in this one. There are a number of ways. You could put gas through it on top of the funnel, have it come out the other side, and see if there's no obstruction. But me simply blowing through it, we can see that this is good. Now I'm going to put it right back in. You could easily order another one from your Yamaha dealer if you had to or online. If you wanted to rule it out, though, you could drop the funnel right in this hose you moved the filter from and reconduct the test you just did before. And this would go straight down to the pump and right out to the hoses to the carburetor. There'd really be nothing but pump at this point, pumping hoses for this test. You could even remove the outlet hose from this pump right here, see if gas comes out. But if nothing comes out, you got a bad pump. You know, at that point, there's nothing left to test. You're going to have to replace this thing. Even if it makes a noise, doesn't necessarily mean that it's pumping anything. We're going to put the uh, fuel filter back on now, moving this funnel. Filter goes on with the square here facing up. We can see the orange side is pointed towards the front. The white side is pointed towards the back. And just put the hoses in first. Then I'll seat them all the way like this. And then we'll put the clips back on. I like to get the clips in the position they were before for whatever reason. The exact same indentation on the hose. We can see the two plastic mounts with the hooks that will hold us into place. We just push it down into the rubber till it snaps in, and that's it. The fuel filter is now installed. But what if the pump wasn't making noise? We need to be right here for our next test anyway. I'm going to assume that when you turn on the key that other things work besides the fuel pump, like, you know, the lights, the horn, maybe the starter, that this is just a fuel issue. But we're going to check the main fuse anyway. We see two 30 amp fuses. This one is a spare. This one is the live one. Remove the dust cap from it. Now pull the fuse and we'll test it. We'll move over to diode or audible to make this test. Hook up our connections. We hear a beep. We know this one is good. Confirmed it's good. We're going to place it right back in. And then we'll drop on our dust cap. Then we'll dress this cover right back into position because we have no more business being down here. So we set it down. Line up both holes, move this cable connection for the tank back out of the way here. Reset our fasteners by pushing the center back out like shown. Now we're going to take a look at all the other fuses by pulling off this dust cap right here. Looking under the dust cap, we could see a key that tells us the location of the fuses. And we can see that ignition is over here. It's a 10 amp fuse. This one right here, red. We're going to pull that fuse. The same check done again determines continuity. This one shows it to be good. So we're going to put the fuse right back in. This is a wonderful time to inspect all the fuses in the fuse box, not just this one. So take the time to check all of them. With this fuse being good, you may want to ask yourself, going back up to the front of the bike, if you turn this key... And you see the headlight turn on, you see everything else seem normal, and you turn on this switch. Can you hear the horn? And most importantly, when you hit the starter, does the starter bump? If the bike is in neutral and the starter doesn't bump, this switch may be no good, or this may be no good. An entirely different issue affecting the fuel system. So check those out before you continue. Down here at these harnesses at the pump, we see a bunch of connectors. Notably, this black one. We're going to disconnect the black connector. That's the one for the fuel pump. Looking here at the pump side of the connector, we have our ohmmeter. Again, we're going to be measuring a very small amount of resistance. I want to take a measurement of my meter to see what the resistance is in the cable. I'm seeing about 1.6. We'll be sure to subtract that value. As I take a measurement of the pump, we're seeing about uh, 3.4 ohms so we're going to get an actual value of 1.8 and that falls within the range of 1.6 to 2.2 ohms so we're going to say this is good if this were a short or an open then you know your pump is bad you're going to have to replace the pump but assuming everything's good we're just going to put this connector right back on and continue on to the last check the last thing that we're going to be testing is a fuel pump relay it's this module right here forward the carburetors it's one of the more difficult tests, so I saved this for last. It slides down and out from the metal bracket from its rubber mount. I have a video here showing the side trim removed so you can see it sliding down from that mount. It's very simple to remove. 
we disconnect it from the harness very easily by pushing down on this fastener on the harness and then just pulling it away from it. We can see the pins are keyed for identification. We can see my module is shown here with the rubber mount facing down for reference. This will be one of the more difficult tests to conduct requiring connectivity to a 12 volt power source. We can see that I have a 12 volt power supply. I've said it here obviously already before I make my connections, ensure that it's 12 volts. Mine is also current limiting, which is helpful. You could use a battery as well, but be sure to be careful. Everything here is pre-wired for this demonstration. I also have my continuity meter off to the right. Here's the connections to the power supply. I've used green and red in this example. And we could see that they are wired in to the pins that I've demonstrated before. Again, referencing the rubber mount on the bottom to know which way to hold this unit. When we make those connections, you may want to fabricate uh, some wires to do this. I'm using connectors that could get really close and not ground out to the other pins alongside. I'm going to demonstrate just the energizing of the relay first. And we could hear it clicking on and off as it energized, so that sounds good. And just for reference, we see here that the relay actuated draws 50 milliamps of current. Now we're going to add the continuity meter into the circuit to ensure that when the relay is actuated, it opens up the path to allow current to flow as we would expect it. For my purposes, you can see I took one probe of the meter and tied it to the positive post on the power supply where the red cable was coming out of. The other probe of the continuity meter, I'll simply hold onto the pin on the top left of the module just above that green wire. Now everything's connected, the continuity meter is still showing open. But if I pull the switch up to turn on the 12 volts, we could see the continuity meter is showing a short. We could hear the audible beep, shut it off, and now it's open again. Pull it up, and it's open. Okay, the relay's working. This module is good, and now we could say that the testing of this is concluded. We're going to put the module back. I showed the trim removed for easier viewing. Ensure that the module is facing the right direction. Snap it back in for positive snap. Lower it down over that metal fastener and slide it back up till it clears the bottom and then slide it back down till it meets that bottom point. At this point, if you haven't found the fuel pump problem, find a friend or a shop who could swap the igniter because there's nothing left to test. Putting the tank on is reverse of removal of the tank and the seat and all of the other associated parts. I have a movie that shows this. I have a link on the top right that you could click on. It'll take you to it if you want to see how that's done. Also shows the cable catching fire if you want to see that as well. So that's it. That's the complete troubleshooting for the fuel system for the V-Star 1100. I hope you uh, found this video helpful towards the troubleshooting of your bike, uh, leading towards the repair without spending too much money. Click that like and subscribe button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?